Hi everyone, my name is Scott Cairns, and I'm going to show you how to find the number to which the infinite sum of squared reciprocals converges to. So, what this infinite series converges to, what number? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to write out the Taylor series of sine of x. So this equals x minus x to x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial and so on. If you've taken calculus you should know this. Um, if you haven't taken calculus don't worry you'll basically what you need to know is that sine of x equals this infinite polynomial where the exponents of each of the x's is odd, and it's over that exponent factorial. Again, you'll learn about this in calculus, but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to divide this whole thing by x, both sides of this equation by x. The reason we're doing this is because we need to make these exponents even, and you'll find out later why we're doing this. So this equals 1. C equals 2, C equals 4, C equals 6. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to factor this. We can factor this. This is a polynomial. And since 1 is the first term, then 1 is going to be the first term in each of the factors. There's just going to be an infinite number of factors. So 1 minus, and then what's the next number? Well, if we think about just a regular quadratic, um, plus 2x plus 1, I mean, this should be pretty simple, it's just x plus 1 squared, or we can think about it as x minus negative 1, where negative 1 is the root of this polynomial. So if you plug in negative 1, it equals 0. So we need to find a number for this factor that makes this whole thing equal to 0. So if we look at sine of x over x, basically we just need to make the numerator sine of x equal to 0 and it'll be equal and the whole thing will be equal to 0. So if we list out our roots of sine of x, we know that 0 pi 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on. 4 pi, 5 pi, infinite number. Except we can't have 0. The reason is if we make x equal to 0, then the denominator will also be equal to 0 because x is in the denominator. And 0 over 0 is undefined. So then we're going to do x. So the root of this is going to be x over pi. The reason is, is when we plug in, if we plug in pi into x, then this fraction is going to be equal to 1, and 1 minus 1 equals 0, and then the whole thing will be equal to 0. So the next factor is 1 plus x over pi, because if you think about a unit circle, you can also go clockwise, or um, negative radians, and it will be the same number. Negative pi also makes sine of x equal to zero. The next factor I don't know what happened there, um, is 1 minus x over 2 pi, because 2 pi is also a root, times 1 plus x over 2 pi. And then you can keep going 1 minus x over 3 pi, 1 plus x over 3 pi, an infinite number of factors. But you can see that there is something going on, that we have these groups of factors, these pairs, that make a difference of squares. You can notice that this is a difference of squares, 1 minus x over pi times 1 plus x over pi. And this equals you know, difference of squares, 1 minus x squared over pi squared, 1 times 1 is 1, 
x squared times pi squared is x squared over pi squared times, then we look at the next group, 1 minus x squared over 4 pi squared. And if you were to do um, 1 minus x over 3 pi, the next one would be 1 minus x squared over 9 pi squared. So you can see, you can start to see how our original problem is related to this because 1 over if you think about it, the coefficients of the of the pi squared terms is just the same um, denominators of the infinite series that we have up above so this is an infinite number of factors and if we f if we took the time to factor all these out to foil all these out the x squared term in this whole thing would be negative 1 over pi squared plus, or, oh yeah, I guess plus, plus negative 1 over 4 pi squared plus negative 1 over 9 pi squared. Remember, this is the coefficient of the x squared term and on and on and on. There's an infinite number. And what this is basically equal to negative 1 over pi squared times our original problem. This is what I just stated before. It equals the infinite sum 1 over n squared starting with n equals 1. So how does this help us? You're probably wondering, like, how did, what did I just do? How, how do I get, this doesn't help us at all. Well, if we look back to our Taylor series polynomial of um, sine x over x, the coefficient of the x squared term isn't that. It's 1 over 3 factorial, negative 1 over 3 factorial. So this means that this negative one, negative 1 over pi squared times the infinite series of 1 over n squared, our original problem, equals negative 1 over 3 factorial by transitive property. They're both the coefficients of the x squared term. So we can now make them equal to each other if we do negative 1 over 6, which is 3 factorial, equals negative 1 over pi squared times the infinite series, the infinite sum, sorry, as when n equals 1 of 1 over n squared. And we can isolate this number right here. We can isolate this by multiplying both sides of the equation by negative pi squared. So eventually, we would get pi squared over 6 equals the infinite sum of 1 over n squared when n equals 1, when n starts with 1. And that is the answer.